Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is unveiling his border plan on the presidential campaign trail. He is calling it the no excuses DeSantis plan to secure the border. Largely mirrors former President Donald Trump's plan, first major policy that the Republican presidential hopeful has shared as he looks to compete in these upcoming primaries. CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez joins us now with more on this. Okay, Camilo, I was reading through this. Uh, some of it seems impossible. Some of it seems repetitive. Some of it seems, as Tony mentioned, an echo of a Trump policies. Uh, what stands out to you? Hi, Lilia and Tony. This is arguably the most hardline immigration platform by a presidential candidate in recent memory, rivaled, I think, only by the 2016 Trump campaign that really used this issue to galvanize many voters. This plan calls for a return, as you mentioned, Lilia, to many Trump-era policies along the U.S.-Mexico border, including the so-called Remain in Mexico program. That policy requires migrants to wait outside of the U.S. for their asylum hearings. It would also revive the, the tension of families traveling with minor children. That is a practice that was discontinued by the current administration. It would also reinstate agreements that allow the U.S. to quickly deport Central American migrants to Central America and have them seek asylum there instead of in the U.S. Importantly, this plan also calls for the U.S. government to stop funding groups that help and shelter migrants along the border. As you know, Lilia, these groups and organizations play a key role in the reception of migrants along the border. And in the interior, this proposal would charge ICE agents, deportation agents, to go out and arrest and deport additional groups of undocumented immigrants. So mm. this is obviously, as Lilia mentioned, only a campaign proposal. But it, even if some of these policies are enacted, it would represent a radical shift from current border and immigration policies. So uh, the, the Biden administration's policies are a shift from Trump's. But if you mm -hmm. go back to Obama, when Biden was VP, I mean, people used to call Obama the deporter in chief. Yeah. He was, That's right. Yeah, he contributed to border wall construction, uh, uh, took the, the security down there more seriously than some of his critics would have liked. Yeah. So how, how does it compare to the, the longer history of American policy on the border? Well, let's set the stage here, Tony. Trump and DeSantis are both trying to portray themselves as the toughest candidate on immigration during this Republican uh, candidacy run. And so DeSantis, for example, has even accused Trump of supporting amnesty by endorsing a proposal in 2018 that would have traded border wall funding uh, in exchange for the legalization of some of the undocumented immigrants in this country, mainly dreamers, those who were brought here as children. But the truth of the matter is, is that there is not a lot of daylight between the immigration platforms offered by Trump and DeSantis. They're both proposing mass deportations of immigrants here in the U.S. They're both supportive of building a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border or continuing to build that wall. They both support a plan that would exclude undocumented immigrants from the census counts that uh, the government currently uses to ex uh, to allocate rather seats in the House of Representatives, and importantly, they're both supportive of ending birthright citizenship. That is that longstanding interpretation of the U.S. Constitution that grants citizenship to anyone born here on U.S. soil including those who have parents who are not in the country legally. So, in, in many ways, DeSantis is proposing to revive this Trump playbook on immigration. He's just arguing that he will be in he will be able to implement it rather more effectively. But at the end of the day, these policies are very similar. OK, Camilo, uh, that thing, last part that you mentioned, along with many things here, have been fought in court already. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have, a, we have a Supreme Court that is, you know, primarily uh, conservative. So, uh, is it implementable? <laughs> Well, Quickly, for example, we let you go? <laughs> the move to end birthright citizenship is very legally questionable. Many legal experts believe that it will take a constitutional amendment to change that right. policy. Many of these initiatives, like border wall construction, need congressional support in Congress. And if Democrats control one of both chambers of Congress, that will be very hard for a Trump or DeSantis administration to achieve. And as you mentioned, because most of these measures rely on the president's executive authority, they will be vulnerable, Lily and Tony, to lawsuits from Democratic-led states and migrant advocates, just like those Trump administration policies were back in 2017 and back in 2018, when many of the Trump administration's efforts to restrict immigration were blocked in federal court. 
And DeSantis is already facing backlash from his own uh, lawmakers from his party in Florida. So we'll see how this all actually plays out. Camilo Montoya Galvez, thanks so much for all that wisdom.